Hey guys, it's SD, your host of the Life Fix Relationship Podcast, where people with all sorts of backgrounds, challenges, and life experience show us how they make their relationship extraordinary. Hey guys, we're here today with Jasmine Tarani. How you doing? I am doing great. Happy to be here. Me too. Uh, you want to start by telling us a bit about yourself and what you do? Ooh, okay. So I'm a human of all, and I am a mother, and I'm a wife. But professionally, I am what you'd call a life therapist. It's essentially the combination of traditional psychotherapy and coaching with mindfulness and meditation. And so I have had a private practice, a virtual private practice, actually, for the past, I don't know, 13 years. And I work primarily with high-achieving women to help them be successful in their personal lives. So people who have been highly successful professionally and are kind of badasses in their professional field, helping them be just as successful with their relationships, with their partners, with their kids, and dealing with their stress and anxiety and whatever goes on within them. Wow. So do you want to tell us, what do you think makes a relationship extraordinary? So I've been really thinking recently a lot about this concept. I I always have kind of metaphors in my head when I work with my clients, and somehow they come out visually. And I've been thinking a lot about how in a relationship, and we, we communicate. And so currently we're, there's like a bridge between us, right? And so right now you're on my side of the bridge with me. So you're in my head, you're in my thoughts, you're listening to what it is that I'm experiencing or saying or sharing, and you're being here with me on my side. Now, what's interesting about the work that I do is that as a therapist, my job is to be on other people's side of the bridge, right? Like the value in what I do is that they feel heard, they feel seen, like I'm 100% on their side, I'll ask them questions, I help them figure out their own answers and come to their own conclusions, but it's all about them. And that's like the beauty of that dynamic is that people feel really loved. They feel really heard. They feel really listened to. They feel supported. They get to like work through all their own stuff. Now, what's interesting that I find personally is that I can be on like all my clients. I'll have like 10 clients in a row, right? And I can be for 10 hours straight on somebody else's side of the bridge and like be there with them and experience it with them. But for whatever reason, when I'm with my kids or I'm with my husband, it's so much harder to be on their side of the bridge with them. It's just like, it blows my mind. Is I just don't want to be on their side of the bridge. I want to be on my side of the bridge and I want them to come to my side of the bridge with me. And that's where the conflict often happens in our relationships is that we both get really stuck on our own sides of the bridge. And the challenge is how do we take turns? Like how do we come to, especially like with your spouse or with your children is I'm aware of like how much I can be on their side of the bridge without like going crazy. You know, it's like, I need you to come to my side or I need to be on my side or I need a break or whatever. And so I think understanding that dynamic of like whose side of the bridge am I on right now and understanding that both people in the dynamic need to be honored. So for example, if you have your spouse, right, and you have some challenging situation, both people when there's a challenge and a conflict or like there there's issues the issue is usually because both people are like fixated on staying on their side of the bridge or that they have some sort of trigger amongst them that puts up walls between their sides of the bridge right and so the question is is how do you see this dynamic between us as a couple as this bridge how do you learn how to say okay i need to i, I often think of like communication as um like blind men around an elephant have you heard this expression yeah yeah, yeah? yeah. Okay. but you want to explain it for the people who don't know what it is so it's like if you have an elephant and there's blind men around the elephant all fighting over what an elephant is and one's at the trunk and one's at the tail no it's this big honker thing no it's this little flimsy thing like that they could get into a fight trying to prove their point whereas the truth of the matter is is that they're both right and that both perspectives exist simultaneously and your perspective of the trunk is the same thing as the perspective of the tail they're both accurate and the important thing is to come over to the other person's side and say oh it is this too oh it is that too and so this idea of coming back to this bridge when you're in a relationship with somebody is how do you understand that my perspective is this and your perspective is that and they're both right neither is right neither is wrong and how do we create a dynamic where first and foremost, I'm going to go to your side of the bridge. Stop asking them to come to yours first. Step up, be the initiator of going to their side of the bridge first. Get really curious. What's it like on your side of the bridge? What is your perspective? Not right, wrong, and having your own opinion about it, but really trying to understand what that perspective is like and hang out there with them enough to where they feel like you get it. 
And then once they feel seen, once they feel heard, then you can invite them to your side of the bridge to have your experience. But what often happens is that we, when we plant our feet and we don't do this thing where we go to their side first and then invite them to our side, we have these moments where we trigger each other and we just put up walls and then we disconnect and then we forget about it or we, it, or we keep having the same issue over and over. And so if you notice a wall that's going up when, when they're supposed to be on your side of the bridge, you get to also say, I'm noticing, see when that happens, I feel unheard and now this wall's going up and now I don't feel like sharing with you anymore. Can we try that again? It's always like, can we try it again? Okay, come back. Now, how do you stay on this side of the bridge with me and help have me feel seen and heard and understood? Yeah, I like that, that analogy, but it was really good. So if we could just break it down a bit first in the parts of how do you suggest in a little more detail people to really get to the other person's side of the bridge? So I often feel uh, that people are really missing out. Like all of the training that somebody does to become a therapist is about becoming an active listener, right? And it's a real skill because to have someone feel heard and seen is different in the way that we normally interact with each other. So there's a few key phrases and things to do to make sure that some, when you go to their side of the bridge, that they really feel heard and they feel understood. And if you want to look more into it, you can look up, I'm sure you can Google active listening, different things that you can do. So um, two things that I always say are most important when you're communicating is never ask a question starting with why. So why makes people feel defensive? So why will make them put up a wall and not let you in? Why did you do that is not the same thing as, is there any particular reason you did that? So if you notice, like one is a little bit more, they're trying to get to the same answer, but one can feel, make someone feel defensive and the other one makes like you feel like- Like you're saying I'm doing something wrong. Right, right? exactly. While well, the other one is giving them a chance to explain themselves and understand the story better. And to be coming from loving curiosity, to sincerely want to understand that perspective, not from like, trying to prove yours as right and theirs as wrong to, to understand both perspectives are right. So I'm going to come over to your side of the bridge and I'm going to be really lovingly curious to actually understand. And so the way that I'm going to go about trying to understand it is through my questions. So not using why, right? So it's, is there any particular reason you did that? Could you explain this a little to me? I don't really understand, whatever. So you let people talk. And then what you do is you take what it is that they said and you put it to them in your own words. Okay, so it seems like this, or are you saying this? Or, okay, to just clarify it, did you mean this? And so you're just essentially taking what they're saying, they're saying and giving it back to them and like continuing to let them explain talk. right not just saying it oh so you mean this but more asking them to clarify making sure you understand what exactly. they're saying exactly and so another word to avoid so don't say why another word is but right so a lot of people oh i understand that you mean blah 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 but and then come to my side of the bridge like when you say but you're essentially like telling people the first part of my sentence doesn't matter because i only care about the second part of my sentence yeah. so may turn but into and why are you laughing <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> right? So instead of but, you say and, right? But the point is that you're not, you don't go to your side of the bridge until they feel heard and they feel done, like satisfied and then you invite them. Okay, so I understand your perspective in all these different ways. Now I have a different perspective. Would you like to hear it? And then you, you ask for permission to share it and then you ask for them to open their walls and to come to your side and to be open to hearing yours too, right? But while well, we're still on their side, so you don't ask why you don't say but you use you take what they say and you paraphrase it and you give it back to them and then you ask for clarifying questions and make sure that the, the questions are open-ended not closed which means like don't ask a yes no questions like did you like dinner yes right versus like what did you think about dinner right so it's just a like, simple thing where you're giving people space to share and to be open and to talk and therefore then there's more content that you can play with in terms of the ways in which you interact. So then once they've shared all their perspective and then they feel heard, you can even ask clarifying, like, did you feel like I understood that? Like, what was it like for you, for me? I'm like, I'm really working very hard to be here on your side of the bridge right now. Like, do you, do you feel heard? Do you feel understood? Like, is this, is there something else I could be doing differently to help you feel whatever? And then you get clarity there and then it's like, okay, well, so now I have another perspective too. Would you like to come? Right. And so then, then this is something that I often do with my own husband, which is that I'm a professional listener. Right. So I have all these skills in my head. I know how this is supposed to be done. I know what it feels like to be listened to. But 
he doesn't do it that way. He'll like jump in and try to fix it. And well, have you thought of this? And have you thought of, and so instead of being annoyed with him, like the, the goal is to say, Hey, this thing that you do makes me feel this way. Right. So now we're on my side of the bridge and I'm sharing what I'm sharing. And the way that he is interacting with me is he keeps going back to his side of the bridge. He doesn't know these, these skills. Right. And so I have to show him, you know, when you try to fix it or when you come in and what I'm asking for right now is for you to just listen. And then he just closes his mouth. He doesn't say anything. And I'm like, okay, well now can you like nod and acknowledge? <laughs> that you shared what I said. He's like, but I'm listening. I'm like, I know. (laughs) So it's it's like, it's being willing to realize that we're on the same team and the way that I need to be heard, I need to explain to you. And that whenever you do something that annoys me, that makes me want to put up a wall to you. And I share that. So like in this moment, I want to cut off and I don't want to talk to you anymore. So can we try that again? And then to keep actually showing him exactly how it is that I need to be listened to. And then the final understanding is like okay so this is your perspective and this is my perspective do we understand are we both feeling heard great okay now what do we do with this information as a team to like move forward in whatever the challenges are? yeah that's really clear it makes a lot of sense so what do you suggest to couples to this wants to hear of this metaphor of the bridge to discuss it first so that way they would both be on the same page and say okay now i'm going onto your side of the bridge and then right yeah i think it's a great i think it's great to do that i mean it depends on how people, open people are to that kind of stuff sometimes women feel like they have to be a little bit more strategic um to be able to utilize some of these practices but yeah if both people are open like okay i'd love for this conversation to be more intentional and i think think also in general to be intentional about the conversation sometimes we fall into like challenging conversations unintentionally and people aren't prepared for it and then it can blow up in ways that it wasn't intended to so like giving people like all right, tonight, let's have a date night. Kids are asleep. It's eight o'clock, whatever. Like, let's talk about this thing. So then most, both people are like, okay, let's talk about this thing at that time. Yeah. Now, what if your spouse isn't coming over to your side of the bridge? What do you suggest someone do? Just share how you feel. And when you share how you feel, it's never using the word, okay, it's another word not to use. Never use the word you. You don't make me feel any way. I feel these ways. Things that you do may trigger me, but they're my feelings and they're my responsibility. So I'm not expecting you to be a different whatever so that I don't feel this way. However, I would like to be able to share with you what it is that I'm feeling in response to your actions so that you understand me better. Not because I'm trying to change you, not because I need you to be different, but just so that you understand, like my dad used to X, Y, Z. Therefore, when when this thing happens, not when you do it, when this thing happens, it has this feeling inside of me. So I need you to know that I act this way and I act aggressively or whatever, or whatever it is that I'm going through. And I, I want you to understand it, but I can't blame you for it. And so the less that you blame the other person for it, the more willing they'll be to hear it because then they're just being your friend and then they're just trying to understand what you're going through. But the second, that's a, those are that's another way that they put up their wall is the second you say you or the second you say why, they put up their wall and then you're not invited to their side. Yeah. And so the idea is how do you keep these walls down? And whenever the walls go up, the only thing you do is address the walls, not the content. So how do you do that? I just felt a wall go up. I just felt like you just checked out. What just happened, yeah. right? Or like I'm putting up a wall right now and I and I don't feel like talking to you anymore. Can we talk about it? So you because what happens is people put up walls and then they keep like beating down the wall with whatever the content is of what they're talking about. And you can't communicate when there's walls up. So if walls are up, we only talk about walls. Why do we put up walls together? Why does this happen? Sorry, I'm asking wise, right? But, but but that's a we, right? It's not it's not a towards you. It's like let's talk together about what's the reason why we put up these walls together or trying to understand why this happens, right? And it's hard not to use why. But it's most important to feel like we're on the same team and we're trying to figure this out together and we're not against each other. As soon as you have the walls and it separates people. Right. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Anything else you want to share with us? Yeah. Um, I've actually been because of this corona situation, I have I can only see so many people people individually in my private practice. And so what I have done is I have opened up a community for professional mothers, like high achieving, you know, women who are trying to balance it all, taking care of their kids and their husbands and their businesses and everything. It's a very, it's so much going on. And so what I've realized is that how can I support these women? And so what in this community, what we do is we record these sessions anonymously that I have with my clients. And so then instead of everybody having to have their own sessions all the time, we can be learning through each other through these sessions. So 
we in the in the community it's really you have access to two online courses that i have which is one about how to be the parent your children need right now and the other is how to deal with your own uncomfortable feelings like stress and anxiety and then there's 10 guided meditations and then you have access to reduced cost individual sessions as well as all of it's like an, a private podcast of all these individual sessions that people are having that are intimate and powerful and deep and we're getting to experience them. Great. Right. Thank you so much. It was great having you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Did you enjoy that episode? Could you do me a personal favor and subscribe and leave a review? It would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.